the intimacy ban was lifted in France. People can have sex now at the Summer Olympics. And they've issued over 300,000 condoms to the 14,500 different athletes and uh, staff people at the Olympics in France. So what the fuck are you talking about? The intimacy ban was lifted at the Olympics. Not a joke. Because of COVID. Yeah, and now so and they've they have three hundred thousand condoms for the fourteen thousand five hundred people that are there. Which all that tells me is that the competition is going to be very stiff this year. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to support some Patreon. Follow us on Patreon. Subscribe, like button. Here we got a video, and this is about Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Did you hear about Ed Sheeran? Ed Sheeran. Of course. Um, Who didn't hear about Ed Sheeran? I love it. Yeah. No, he, he, he obviously was, had a concert in, in India. Um, he was with Dilgit. He was, he was with Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. And Shah Rukh Khan taught him the uh, arm spread. Yeah. I love how... More and more, we're seeing celebrities visit for the first time. But anyways, this it's happening is a, a lot. A little interview with him and Great. Ed Sheeran on waiting to, on wanting to collaborate with Shahrukh Khan um, and other stuff, India, basically. Great. So here we go. I love Great. Ed Sheeran. I do too. And no, we don't look alike just because we have red hair. All redheads look alike. There's only like five redheads in all of Hollywood. That's not even a lie. What? Just look up redheaded male actors. They're just gonna they're gonna recycle about five. Name them. Uh, you look them up. You've you've done this search. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're probably I'm right. A redhead. Name five redhead actors besides your friend because he's not like a name. <laughs> but he is an actor okay. with red hair who's been working consistently for yeah, a true. lot of years. Not, I'm talking about the names. Give me the name. Oh, you mean A-listers? Yeah, maybe. A redheaded A-lister. Yeah. Does Ed Sheeran count because he was in Game of Thrones? No, he doesn't. He's okay. a musician. Um, male. Yeah, male. Yeah, that's the that's the catch. I can name redheaded women immediately, but men. He's either gray or he's dyed it. Benedict Cumberbatch technically has red hair. He's technically a, is he really? Is he's he, not dark brown. He's dyed it since then, or he's gone gray and he's dyed it. Uh, oh, um, yeah, I thought he was brown. Another one is Michael Fassbender, but once again, oh yeah, has dyed it. Dyed it. Um, the one that hasn't dyed it that is a f- fucking. Phenomenal actor and underrated in Hollywood is Alan Tudyk. Alan Tudyk. Mm-hmm. You'll know him from Dodgeball as the pirate. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, he's been in a Got it. ton. Yeah. He's a great dramatic actor, great comedy actor, and he's probably one of the best, most iconic voice actors of all time, and you just don't know it. Just look up everything he's done voice-wise. It's incredible what that man has done. No, yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of redheads. <laughs> there's actually a theory that uh, they won't ever, they, they don't cast redheads as leads in uh, films. Well, that's understandable. Until me. Hey, welcome back to our stupid director. Wait, did I already do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get into this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is in is in India. Hey, stop it. My biggest fan base is in is in India. Really? Mumbai has some incredible Punch. by the numbers. Food, so I'm didn't surprise me. I ate a lot of food, and that was my way. You of sing romance and songs, and they food. love and I put romantic my trust songs. In the chef and just being like, just bring out whatever you think I'm gonna like. Feels great being back. I'm, this is the longest time that I've uh, spent in India this week, so I'm I'm really excited to explore the city. I guess Shah Rukh's like the biggest, right? So yes. probably pr- probably Shah Rukh is the best. Yeah, there really is like a really uh, vibrant positive energy around Bollywood. I definitely lost my privacy. I think that that comes with the territory. Baby, I'm oh, yes, dancing in Maybe the too. dark. Of course they made him sing. Welcome <laughs> back to Mumbai and welcome back, back to Mumbai and Zoom. Thank you. So how does it feel to be back in the city after such a long time? And how do you plan to make it uh, make the wait worthwhile for your Indian fans? Uh, it feels great being back. I'm th- this is the longest time that I've uh, spent in, in uh, India this week, so I'm I'm really excited to explore Deja the vu. city. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna try and get out out that of the city as well. Maybe in the I know, tr- just uh, why see some stuff. But yeah, we didn't need that at the beginning. My trips are always sort of based around food, so I I eat a lot and, when I come and to. And he brings ketchup um, with him everywhere he goes. Apparently, Mumbai has some incredible food. So I'm, I don't know if he still uh, does. Last it, time I ate ago. a lot of food, and that was my way of exploring. And this way will be, yeah. So so, would you like to tell us some of your favorite dishes from Mumbai? 
Uh, I kind of, do you know, my favorite thing to do is to go to a restaurant uh, where you know it's a good chef and you just go, you bring, bring me small, small dishes of your favorite dishes and then, and then you try everything. Sometimes I've been in countries where you end up eating some quite wild stuff, but yeah, that, that I, love, I love putting my trust in a chef and just being like, just bring out and you got the money for it. Like. <laughs> I, so I would, I would know, agree, yeah. Your fan following in India has grown significantly ever since your last visit. So how do you feel that your fan following here is such such a great fan following in this part of the world? For, so this is my bi my biggest fan base is in is in India, and um, that for me is super exciting. Being someone that you know, I, I come from England. I come from a really small town in England, and I never actually thought I would have success outside of England. So to be able to come to a country that isn't my home country and it be the country that likes me the most is it's pretty cool man it's pretty cool i'm really like excited so yeah uh, i personally do believe that social media has played a very significant role in connecting you to your fans mm. and how do you navigate your life and balance yourself between connecting to your audience as well as keeping your privacy in check well i think i never really had the balance right i think like from for my first like four years of my career i was just on I was on social media 24-7, it was Twitter, it was Instagram, it was YouTube, I was just on everything. And then I sort of retracted and stopped and did nothing. Um, and I think both of those two extremes are the wrong thing to do. So I, um, I tend to like, I get to a city and I sort of like, I always have like one thing that I want to do that will be the thing for social media. So like in, in Philippines, we got a portable karaoke machine and some karaoke there in, in Thailand, I got, um, a tattoo and you know here I, w I went to go and visit a school this morning like I'm, I'm really I really like doing stuff with music education with with kids in 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 schools just because the it's such I, a white I don't know boy. what it's like in in, in, <laughs> India, but in England so the, the art in general and shoes. is really underfunded <laughs> and the government just don't really care about it anymore which is weird considering all the export that comes out of England that we're proud of is it's art it's uh, films and music so uh, I like going into schools and doing music stuff because uh, no one's really doing that in England. I remember that one, one of your friends, Jamie Lawson, he once put up a, a post Olson. on his social media joking about that he has to buy is your first album just to support you. But then he realized that he doesn't, you don't really need a support. Yeah. Now that you've completed a, nearly a, over a decade actually, over a decade in the mainstream music, how do you, what do you think you have learned and what do you think you've lost? Uh, I definitely lost my privacy. I think that that comes with the territory, you know, territory. you're like, if I'm out and about, I, whatever happens, I have to be on, which I think is fine. I think that's a, that, that's a fine trade to have. Um, and I think what I've learnt is that, th like, nothing is, nothing is that important in the moment like I put I used to put so much importance on how things did instantly and a career is such a like long period of time and it and it fluctuates and some songs that I put out that I think no one liked in years to come they're fan favorites and they're you know the songs that people like most of the, the shows so I've just learned to just trust my gut instinct make music put it out it's, the audience will be there at some point. Like, if it's not there instantly, it might be there in five years, it might be there in ten years, but just as long as I like the music and I, I feel good about it, I'm just going to keep um, releasing it and not to, like, live too much in the um, intensity of the moment of it, I guess. Yeah, I, I actually do remember that you were once on a hiatus from the social media for a brief period of time. Yeah. And I want to know that how did this hiatus help you uh, change your perspective towards life and the music you create? I think I think what was interesting about being off social media is everyone thought that like I wasn't doing anything. They was so, I'd sort of meet people and they'd be like, "Well, yeah, like what have you done?" And I'm like, just because I've not been posting about it doesn't mean that like life no. doesn't exist. I think that's what what's there quite no interesting. Life about social media. No life like, out of social media. If it's not on social media, did it happen? We like, that's no, what's quite weird about it. Prove it. Whereas there's so many experiences that you can have in your life day to day that can be really important experiences that you don't need to post about, but if you don't post about them, then did they happen? It's a weird, like, it's weird. So, yeah, uh, now that we are coming to an end, let's just, let's just play a small uh, rapid fire game. Cool. Uh, you know, I, I, I actually named this game <laughs> Raw Ed after cool. Raw Egg. Oh, yeah, well, cool, thank you. <laughs> so, my first question to you is, an Indian artist that you would like to collaborate with someday? 
I, do you know what I said earlier? I've, I've been listening to a lot of King recently, so I think King's great. King? And an Indian actor that you would like to feature in your music video? Uh, I don't know really. I mean, there's, there's, there's I think, I guess Shah Rukh's like the biggest, right? So yes. probably, pr probably Shah Rukh is the best. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> so my third question. Um, would you like to make a cameo in Bollywood movie someday, or would you like 100%, to? Hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. Sign, oh. sign me up, sign me up. I'd love to, I'd love to be involved um, musically as well. It's like it's something that I just the the energy. Uh, I keep saying energy, but there really is like a really uh, vibrant, positive energy around um, around Bollywood, and I uh, I experienced it the first time I came here. It was like it's it's not something that I'd ever really like looked into pre-2015 and coming coming here to do the show in 2015 it was like opening my eyes to a completely new set of like music it was it was really cool a song that you wrote for your contemporary that you wished you could have kept for yourself uh i think well i think all things happen for a reason so actually i wouldn't take any of them back but um i really love this song i did with this girl tori kelly called i was made for loving you and um, but I think it works beautifully as a as a duet. Um, but I don't I don't know if I take anything back really because I think like it all adds strings to your bow. I think that the reason that people know me as a singer songwriter rather than just a singer is because they might have heard a Justin Bieber song or a One Direction song or what, whatever and been like, oh, Ed had something to do with that. So I think it's I think it's important to be a multifaceted songwriter and be able to not just stay in your lane basically. A rap song that you would like to recreate in your own style someday? Do you know what, I did um, the first minute of Stan, uh, not Stan, of uh, Lose Yourself when I played with Eminem in Detroit <laughs> and I'd never covered that before. Um, so yeah, doing a full version of that would be fun. That was that was really nice. Yeah, I, I was actually kind of expecting you to say Stan <laughs> because I... Yeah. I well, I think Stan, I think there's, there's a difficult song Chris to cover. Farley on SNL yeah. interviewing yeah. Paul McCartney. Lose Yourself has uh, just an energy yeah. uh, in it. You remember when you did, remember when you did that? Cover, that was great. Can you uh, just sing any any 10 seconds of your song? Uh, just look at it. Yeah, yeah. Look at it. Um, Baby, I they might act, dancing they might ask you. in the dark with you between my arms, barefoot on the grass. Listening to our favorite song. I thought he needed auto When I saw you in that you dress, that? looking joke. so oh. beautiful, I don't deserve this. Darling, you, you look perfect yeah. tonight. That was really good, and thank you very much, Ed, for doing this. Thanks for having me. I, I really look forward to your concert. Nice one, man. Thank you so thank much. You. Well, it was very sweet. I, he, you could tell it's a press junket. Right, and so yeah, people are coming in. People, he came in for yeah. his ten minutes, yeah, and then uh, and then left. Press yeah. We've only ever done one in terms of us interviewing, and it wasn't a full press junket style because we weren't moving. Correct. They were they were coming. It's when we did Berlin here at the yeah. Indian Film Festival Los yeah. Angeles, and we got about ten to fifteen. Yeah. I have this shawl interview was a little press junkety. Yeah, because people came bit. in and out, but we were last because he knew us. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to be last so we could talk to him. So like I got to set up and all that kind of stuff. But like these people, like, yeah, <laughs> it's it's if you're not used to it, it's kind of nerve wracking because there is somebody behind the camera saying, "Let's go, minutes, let's go, let's five go." Five minutes. Yeah. All right, we're done. Yeah. Wrap it up. Yeah. Wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's not. It's I I don't like doing them. I did them because I want there was people that we wanted to talk to. Um, and I was like, okay, if that's all we can yep. have time we'll for, take then, it. then whatever. Uh, we got to talk to Rahul Bose, which yeah, was which, an but incredible conversation. As is always the case. I mean, when we, if you've seen any of our interviews, our interviews last 45, to, 45 an to an hour, and that's what we typically like to do is just be able to sit and ruminate and have a nice long conversation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with Tori Kelly, familiarize yourself. That girl is a beast of a singer, and her song with him is fantastic. I knew her before you. Um, huh? She was on Vine. Oh. <laughs> a Alexis just met her. Oh really? Nice. Yeah, Disneyland. Very nice. And that is a Tori Kelly is a, a a big vocal hero of Alexis's, and so she has a picture of her with with, yeah, with Tori she Kelly. Was, uh, She's was she said she was really really. The nice. reason she blew up was because one of her songs blew up on Vine, uh, um, and that's when she started to be able to talk to her wasn't labels. labels and wasn't that one of the very rare times when Simon made a mistake on American Idol? Oh, I don't know. And I don't told know. her you're. 
never gonna nothing's gonna ever happen with you. Tori Kelly, the two two of my favorite singers that the world just doesn't celebrate enough for me are Tori Kelly and Jesse J. Those those ladies can sing like there's no to I adore their vocals. They're just they're just off the charts great. And I love Ed Sheeran. I think he's a great singer songwriter. And all I've ever seen or heard is that he's a good guy. Yeah, he's he's, um, he's great. I, yeah, I hope that he. And I know he's watched RRR. He had talked to him. Uh, oh, had he? Talk. Yeah. He's like, I saw RRR. Of it was course. Incredible. Yes, it is. Um, he sees. I watch it with my mates. Yeah. Um, have you? Um, he's he is an interesting. I don't know. I'm not skilled enough to like. If I hear an English accent, yeah, I know exactly what part it is. Yeah. I can tell that they're English, and I'm like that. I can usually pinpoint it by who else I know as a celebrity that has that similar voice. I'm like, right. oh, he sounds like where Conor McGregor would be from. Or, like, that's yeah, there's, Ireland, obviously. But right, like, yeah. There's there's two English accents that I can pretty much get my head wrapped around when I hear it. Only two. And there's what? Like 30? Tons. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool. Yeah. Cockney, because of the Beatles. Cockney. Uh, the Cockney one is, I can kind of hear what that one is. Um, and uh, basically the Queen's English, when yeah, it's yeah. just central London yeah, yeah. royal family type yeah. English. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's hard. I can't pinpoint where. I like our scouts. From. Birmingham is shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's an interview of English people on TikTok um, saying, which English accent don't you like? And yeah. she's like, no, a lot of people didn't like Birmingham. No, I like Birmingham, but our scouts is shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was. No, she said, "Our scouts, I, Birmingham is shit." Is what, she what What's the game uh, that was all the rage for a hot minute? We were watching it where everybody's naked. Naked and afraid. Naked. No, no, no. no, no. Oh, Not naked, naked and afraid. Ne yeah, naked attraction. Uh, that was funny to watch because oftentimes when they were getting to the point where you hear the person's voice, very strong opinions about what part of England the contestant was from, and people being disqualified because of what part of England they're from. What happened to you over there, attention span king? Uh, <laughs> I hope he, um, on the actual video itself, um, I hope he does collaborate with like a Bollywood movie and I don't, um, that kind of stuff. I, mean, I don't. If you put, if you want <laughs> one of your songs to be the most watched music video of yours of all time, just collaborate with Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. I promise you it will be your most viewed video in the fastest yeah. amount of time. Ever. That's why we want him on the channel to come say hi. Just Has reviews. nothing. Just, just reviews. reviews. Everything. It's just we don't care about the artistry, really. No. It's, uh, someone's typing. I knew it. <laughs> Have some orange Jameson. <laughs> he is somebody that I would love to drink with. Ed Sheeran. Oh yeah. He'd be a good drink. Yeah. He'd be a good drink. He just seems like a really just down to earth. What you see is what you get kind of guy, which it, is that which usually is happens phenomenal. with people that it took a minute, yes. for them to make it. Yes, um, Steve Carell's of the world, like they've been in the industry, but and not that he's old. I think he's probably what thirty six, maybe. Yeah, mid thirties. Yeah, but he he came up, and um, he never like he said, I never expected to really take off outside of maybe England. Um, it, it, not all the time, but and usually, like if you've taken your lumps and it's been a while, you yeah. appreciate how special what happened to you is. Exactly, and he also does things like I don't know if you've seen the footage of him in an interview where he actually has a recording of when he first started writing, and he wants to dispel the myth that talent is simply God given, mm -hmm. that it, it has to be because when anyone says he has God given talent, he'll pull up the recording of himself when he was like fourteen, <laughs> and it's. Brutal. He's terrible. I mean, he's pitchy, but he saves it and plays it just to let everybody know. Look, um, y'all, this is uh, th I, this was a lot of practice and work for me to be able to even sing in tune. Yeah, yeah. He, I like funny. him. I've seen that. Yeah. Um, you would be a good collabo. Um, Arjit Singh and him. Yeah, that'd be a great collaboration. Shreya Goshal. Yeah, but his, just, his, his similar style of music. They're they're they sing yeah. with the guitar. In their romantic songs, you or that other guy, I, yeah, uh, no, Louis Capaldi, right? Yeah, he's another British uh, guy that's very similar to Ed Sheeran. He and Taylor have a song that's l everything lyrically, melodically, everything is just gorgeous. He's a beautiful songwriter. Yeah, he is. He's a be everything lyrically, melodically. He's just a very, very gifted songwriter. Anyways, that was great. Um, 
Let us know what you thought about the video and who should he collaborate with. <laughs> and come and on should the we uh, have should Ed we interview Shah Rukh Khan or interview Ed Sheeran? No, no. Maybe Shah Rukh Khan. Let us know. Maybe. Down below. Just.